Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio, back with another SolidWorks tutorial. Uh, this time covering modelling a spoon. Um, I figure most people seem to have a spoon tutorial online, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, stick my oar in and, and um, see what I come up with. So this is a, like a teaspoon rather than a dessert spoon or something like that. Um, I quickly sketch something out on paper and um, and then dove in modelling it. So um, I'll have this model will be available for download. Uh, it's just easier for people to learn from. If you've got the model, I will put a link in the uh, description of this video where you can download it from. Okay. So basically what I wanted to do was create a spoon that has a consistent thickness through the handle and um, and then a variable thickness as it comes down onto the bowl and then a consistent thickness again through the tip of the bowl. So you can see, just put lines on, you can see here that it comes down into a variable thickness through here. So um, I'll just roll back through the model and then just go through and explain why I've done certain things. Um, I've also named all the features, or most of the features, so it's uh, easier for for people to pick through. Okay, so the um, first thing I did was I created a plan view uh, with just the general dimensions. So these would be tweakable within reason. And then created a center line. Um, which is a single spline. So if you pick on the spline, you'll see here curve degree five. So if you watched any of my other videos, curve degree plus one equals the amount of CVs. So there'll be six points controlling this spline. And I've dimensioned that fully. Um, I did just drag around these these points until I got a the the curve I wanted, and then I and then I um dimension them afterwards otherwise it's too fussy uh, you can see the curvature there the handle it's all there's no inflections kind of flattens off and then curves and then inverts there into the bowl okay next I'm going to create the handle so I've created a cross-section curve at one end is a dimensioned arc and then that gets swept along the center line and then I'm going to trim that back so I've created a using a converted entities I've um, copied the side and rear off the plan view and then I've dimensioned and I have a dimension back from the origin the origin is the tip of the bowl um, to trim back because we want to have a transition a smooth transition between the handle and the bowl so that's the point where that transition will start so then I've trimmed the handle next thing I need to do is is define the the bowl outer perimeter so I wanted to define the um, outside curve of the uh, bowl so to do that firstly I uh, created a side elevation which is uh, the sketch here so I have um, a spline running into a line here and that spline the first three points they're all collinear with the with the line which makes them curvature continuous there and then a tangent constraint onto the trimmed edge of the, um, the handle. Then what I've done is I've created a copy of the bowl perimeter, which is in the plan control sketch at the top. And I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've uh, created a curve, projected two sketches onto each other. Create that curve there. And then I've created... Because I like doing this, I like um, 
turning a curve into a 3D sketch with convert entities. But what I've also done is I have poked the blend point uh, in this 3D sketch by dimensioning back from the origin. So our blend will run from the end of the handle around to this point on the bowl. Okay. Put the, put the curve. Okay. Now I've created a, uh, a plan view sketch, which is the handle to bowl blend control from plan view. So again, I've got three points collinear to the side here because the side here is a line, so that's curvature continuous there. Uh, and around here, I've got a curvature continuous connection to the 3D sketch. Uh, that I just talked about. Okay, and that's dimensioned. And again, I have um, created a curve by projecting the side elevation bowl outline onto the plan view here, which has given us this curve here. Okay, and now to tidy that all up, I've created a 3D sketch. And converted entities of both of these um, both of these curves into one, and then I went insert. I mean tools, spline tools, fit spline. So I fit a spline through all the sections that made that up, which were three sections. So I've got a single spline running through there. Okay, now I'm going to start making the cross sections for the bowl. Um, so, to, to make these, they are all a degree two spline. You can see degree two, three points. Uh, first point has a pierce, pierce point relationship with the center line, and the other end has a pierce point relationship with the, with the 3D sketch that we just created. And then I have an equal length relationship on both of the um, control polygon lines there. Okay, so I've gone through and I've added some um, some planes and some extra sections. And again, these are all the same. They all have a degree two spline with three points with equal length relationship on the control polygon. So for this section here, I created a point. 33% of the way along the centre line there. Okay, and then one, one more up here. I think this one up here is inverted. All these other sections are uh, concave. This one here is convex, because as you can see, we're transitioning from a convex handle down into a concave bowl. Okay, I'm going to make most of this area here with a single boundary surface. Just like that. So if I uh, go into the boundary surface, you can see I have my sections. The tangent constraint to the handle. And on the center line, normal to the center line sketch. Now I've had to fiddle around a bit with the, um, with the tangent influences on these because if I had the center normal to profile on zero, I ended up with some, some peakiness down here, even though we've got lots of cross sections. But if I put it up to 100, it influences, see the, the zebra stripes there, if I push this up to 100, get this ugly sudden kink there. So, um, and the numeric input doesn't work, by the way, if you didn't notice. It's another great SolidWorks feature. So you have to slide or click. Um, ignores the numeric input. So I fiddled with those to get a sort of fairly, I turn on my zebra stripes, a fairly smooth um, result. Okay. So the next job is to create the, the, um, the nose of the bowl here. So what I've done is I've created a 
the 3D sketch, which is a face curve. If you don't know about those, tools, sketch tools, face curve, and you can basically pick a, a face and you can you can divide it up by the amount of curves or a position. So in this instance, they'll select it that as a face curve and I've got a position on face 15% along that face. Okay. Now I'm uh, going to create an extruded surface with that 3D sketch. If you extrude a 3D sketch, you have to specify an extrusion direction, so I've done that. And the reason I extruded this was so I can insert a split feature and in, in doing so split that surface into two pieces. Okay, so now I've got to trim the surface back so I end up with enough boundaries for a four-sided surface. So I've created a sketch, which is an arc, which is uh, constrained, the centre point is on the centre line, it's also on the end of that split, and then trim that back. And now I'm going to knit these two surfaces, and in my knit you can see the boundary between them has disappeared, that's because they're the same surface, if you turn merge entities on, it will realise they're actually pieces of the same surface, so we'll merge them together. Okay. And then I'm going to create a boundary surface around the end there. So this is just four, four boundaries, two in each direction. And I have a normal constraint on the centre line, tangent on, on this edge here, tangent on the curve boundary, and just positional on the outside. So if I turn on my zebras. It's fairly consistent in there. I'm not using curvature continuous constraint because all it will do is force a, a wobble locally. Um, yeah. That's the story for another day, eh? Okay, so knit that together. Right, now I'm going to create the, um, the offsets. So basically the, the handle is going to be one thickness. The front part of the bowl is going to be another consistent thickness and then it's going to be variable in between. So to start with I'm going to offset the handle and that's got an offset of, I think it was 1.6 or something, 1.5 and then offset the, the, the nose of the bowl, 0.65. Now I've offset the whole bowl because I'm going to trim it through here. Okay, so now I'm going to create the sidewall of the handle. So I've created a 3D sketch and I've converted entities there and I'm going to extrude that. Remember to specify a direction when you use a 3D sketch because otherwise it doesn't know where to extrude it. And I've added a an outward draft of 3 degrees just for a bit of realism. And then I'm going to untrim the offset surface underneath and then extend it forward. And then I've created a plane through through here to trim that back so they all line up nicely. There's a plane there, just turn my planes on, as you can see. Plane 5, and then trim that surface back. And now I'm going to add a mutual trim between to, to tidy up the sidewall and the offset back face. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to create the sidewall at the front here, and the side wall at the front is a boundary surface uh, just between the two edges, the edge of the, um, the boundary surface we created and then the edge of the offset. Okay, and now I'm going to create the, the variable outside wall, <coughs> excuse me, so this is a loft, so what I've done is I've picked First edge is the end of our 1.5 thick side wall on the handle, and the other edge is the end of the 0.65 thick bowl, bowl uh, the nose of the bowl side wall. And then I've added one guide curve and added tangent to surface, uh, tangent to face constraints on the um, on the edges there. Okay. 
So now I'm going to trim back the, the rest of this offset underneath that we don't need because we only want the front of it. So I've just created a line by converting the entities. Converted the entity here and extended it through. Trim. Okay. So now I'm going to create a loft through the middle here. Much in the same way. I'm just going to save this. Had a few crashes so. Um, okay, a variable loft here which is going to automatically um, take care of the, the, the transition from the 0.65 up to the 1.5 mils here. So I've created a, a plane on a point normal to this line here. And then created a sketch which is basically just between the two faces. And at the other end, do the same thing. And it's important that you make your light, your plane, um, on this point, and and uh, normal to the edge, because that's how we're going to derive our tangency. Okay. So now, if I show this, you can see there I've created a a planar face, and that is a loft that. Basically has two sections, both of them with normal to profile, and then uh, using the edge as the guide curve. So that smoothly transitions from the point, point 0.65 up to the um, 1.5 thickness. And because our, our plane that the sketch was on was normal to this, this edge at that point, then that means if we make the, the uh, profile there, Normal to the profile, that means it will be tangent here and tangent here, this edge. Okay, so we don't need to fuss around with splines and dragging things to try and get a nice even transition. Okay, so now I'm going to create my um, cross curves for the boundary surface on the back of the bowl. So I think I've got three, and again, these are um, degree two. Uh, style splines, as you can see, degree 2, which means it has three points, um, pierce point relationship with the edge of this loft, pierce point with the outside variable wall, horizontal constraint on one control polygon, and then equal, constra equal length constraint on both the, uh, both the control polygons, okay, and another section there. And just like I did on the front, I'm just now going to create a boundary surface there. Except this time the boundary surface, because we've already got these faces, this boundary surface will be tangent to the face on the front there. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to speed up just to where this is taking a while. Okay, now I've knitted it all together. And I'm going to put a few fillets on. Curvature continuous fillet there, top edge, a variable uh, fillet running from 0.5 round to 0.35 and then 0.25 on the end. Same thing on the back face. And then basically mirror the surface, knit it together and um, solidify and then a keep body at the end to clean everything up. Okay, so there's the spoon. Fairly happy with it. Um, there's a few little wiggles and wobbles in the in the end here. Um, turn my zebras on. A few inconsistencies, but um, I think generally there's probably 50 different ways you could do this. So this is my first attempt at a spoon, so it's it's not too bad. Um, and and it's. It's quite nice to have the um, the transition from a, a thick handle down into this um, reduced section through the bowl, which on most spoons, if you look at them, seems to happen. So there you have it, um, spoon tutorial, AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson. I'll uh, place this file online, so have a look in the description please, and uh, also check out any other videos that might interest you on my uh, channel. Cheers.